Hi and welcome. Noise jammers in DCS operate by negating information to the observing aircraft. In particular, they deny the range determination, making the computation of a proper firing solution either impossible or very difficult. Nevertheless, other parameters can still be assessed. The APQ-120, similarly to the F-14's OG-9, can still track the angles of a target, thus providing altitude and azimuth in certain conditions. A vertical line of rubbish appears if a jamming aeroplane is near the radar scan volume, not necessarily within. Intuitively, since the ordinate of the radar scope represents the range, a contiguous line indicates the inability to discern such a parameter. This effect persists until the radar overcomes the ECM at a range known as the burn-through range, after which the radar system can again determine the target's distance. What you are watching is a jamming MiG-21 intermittently emitting and the effects of changing radar options on the clarity of the radar image. The starting slant range is circa 80 nautical miles and the toggle happens every couple of miles. Parallel to the emitter, another fish bed flies at the same speed and direction. The first noticeable effect is how the noise affects the radar display, almost blinding it. Next, since we know the initial distance, how visible the MiG-21 is, the detection range for such an aeroplane is circa half the current range. Ergo, jamming makes the emitting aircraft very visible, and much farther than it would be otherwise. Given the clutter generated, the WISO can tune down the gain to ignore the jamming signal. However, this effect is achievable only if the range is large enough. Otherwise, the ECM will still affect the APQ-120. On a positive note, this gives the WISO a tool to build SA and approximate the target's range. Home on Jam Although the WISO can manually track the variations in altitude and azimuth, the APQ-120 is capable of entering the so-called Home on Jam mode, where the avionics automatically track angles. For this to happen, the jammer-generated noise must exceed a set threshold. When the distance between the Phantom II and the locked target is less than the burn-through range, the APQ-120 switches automatically to standard tracking. In this example, the F-4E is intercepting a TU-22, NATO name, backfire, which is using electronic countermeasures to deny the range the crew range determination. Initially, HOJ mode is unavailable, as the signal appears on the radar display but is not strong enough for the avionics to follow. Pay attention to how the signal is becoming more and more visible on the radar screen. As the range decreases, two things happen. In premise, the contact reflects more radar waves, making itself visible on the radar screen. This shadow allows the WSO to track the range manually and, in certain conditions discussed in a dedicated video, employ the AIM-7 sparrows. Next, the range is short enough for home on jam tracking to be attempted, initially unsuccessfully. Eventually, the range decreases enough for the APQ-120 to pierce through and properly track the Tupolev. Note that the WISO can disable the automatic HOJ mode by setting the three-way track switch to AOJ out. Range considerations. As mentioned, noise jammers negate the determination of the aeroplane's range. Similarly to the Tomcat, the lack of range information makes the employment of missiles more problematic, although less or at least differently than when the fighter sports long-range weapons, such as the AIM-54 Phoenix. The effective range of the AIM-7 is, in fact, quite limited, and the Phantom crew may cross the burn-through threshold before entering the weapon's envelope. In such a case, all the launching parameters can be obtained, and the missile employment proceeds as usual with the added benefit of how visible a jamming target is from APQ-120 and the missile seeker perspective. The question is how the range can be determined, and the answers vary. In the Tomcat, both Link-4A and Link-4C 
the controller and especially the TCS can be used to assess it. The F4E has instead to rely on the controllers, or with the DMAS upgrade, the TIZIO, the acronym for Target Identification System, Electro-Optical, could probably be beneficial as well. That being said, if the crew wants to engage a jamming target before the range can be determined, they can rely on the mentioned home on jam to have the sparrow homing on the jamming signal. This concludes the overview of the APQ120 and ECM effects. A dedicated video will discuss employment methods and technical and tactical considerations. Thanks for watching and take care.